This is Tom Hiles, I'm the Director of Enrollment Management and Student Services for Penn State University GIAC campus and the Regional Academic Center. Uh, I shared with some of you at my table. I've been doing what I've been doing for 41 years and this is my last one. <laughs> Retirement is on the horizon. All right. The, the name of this program is Finding the Right College. Here, folks, you have one of these. Yes. Okay. You can make airplanes or whatever. Um, <clears throat> Finding the Right College. Uh, one of the issues that I found in all my years in this business is the number of students who go from one college to another college and either lose credits, lose time, cost mom and dad money and heartache because they picked the wrong school in the very beginning. And, and, and I think that doing the research early, I've had a number, number of young people come up and say, well, I'm only in the eighth grade or I'm only in the ninth grade. I go, wonderful. That's who I want to talk to. Because if you're a senior, it's too late. Finding the right college, having a plan, and what I say is making the option open for the student to select what school he or she wants to attend, not have the school tell them which school they can go to. You understand how that works? We? Good. If you don't, we'll, we're going to learn it. If you have questions, and I'm going to do my best, which I do really poorly, I'm going to do my best to make sure we have five or ten minutes to answer questions. This is the slowest PowerPoint machine I've ever seen. Come on. This, there it is. All right. Hi. Come on in and have one of these. There are some primary considerations. One is the most important to mine is what is your academic interest? You have to know what you want to be. I've had people come and talk about engineering at Kent State. We have an engineering program, so that's not for choice. All right, like, that one's gone. <laughs> it's serious. I mean, I know this sounds really simple, but you need to know. Do you want to go to a private school or a public school? Do you understand the differences? Do you want to go to a school that is diverse or a school like me? Are you looking at primarily women's college and you're looking at one of the historical black uh, colleges and universities? Where, where do you want to be? And these are really serious considerations from my perspective. Do you want to go to a large school or a small school? I was sharing with somebody uh, I was the Associate Director of Admissions at Michigan State University for 10 years. I saw people come in there and crash and burn among 52,000 students, and I've seen people come out as Rhodes Scholars, Bill and Melinda Gates Scholars, so some people thrive and some people crash and burn. Who is your child? Who is your child? And, and I'm a parent of six children. Thank God my youngest is 27, married and gone. <laughs> but you know, who controls the decision-making process? And I think it's great that you, know, you want to let your kid go wherever they want. But if you've got an extra 20, 30, 40,000 dollars to do that, then feel free. Or you can give it to me, and I'm short on your time. Do you want it close to home or far away? National research shows that the majority of high school seniors want to go to a college less than 150 miles away from home. Anybody have any idea why? Thank you. Free laundry. There you go. And a home cooked meal once in a while. They can come home on the weekends. Religious or secular? You want to go to a school that has a, a religious uh, program, or you want to just go to a wide open uh, public university? Internship opportunities in, in America today. The students who are going to be employed at the end of their baccalaureate program are those who took advantage of intern and co-op programs. I have a I have a grandson. They graduated two years ago from Grand Valley State University. He was so infatuated with his now wife that he refused to do internships. He's, and I don't want to mean anything bad. There's a bank teller in here. That's not bad. This kid's got graduated with honors with a degree in accounting. But he never did an internship. He has nothing to show to anybody. You know, they need to be thinking about how am I, are there those opportunities and where are they? And an extracurricular co-curriculum. I like to say that there's, there's a, there was a young man earlier today that came up and plays football. Okay, well, I don't want to sound bad, but he was a little guy. He's never going to play at Ohio State. <laughs> you know? I've had people come up to me and go, do you have a football team? I said, no. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> do you want to play or do you want to be on a team? Do you want to be in a fraternity? Do you want to have club activities? Do you want to have, what is going on on that college campus that will interest you and keep you there? Because it isn't all about studying and math and science and all those other fun things. You've got to have a life. And eventually the screen is going to change. <laughs> and we're going to go into what that blue sheet is. Because this started out, that sheet started out as a transfer consideration because I worked a number of years, 21 in my years, and been in a community college. And I always 
it had encouraged my community college students to go visit the schools to which they were thinking about transferring. And they go, well, I don't know what to ask. So I put this transfer consideration thing together. Then when I started getting and working with more freshmen, I decided to turn this around and see what are your admission considerations. And some of you might think some of these are simple, and I don't have a lot of time to get into all of them, but I'm more than happy to entertain you in the office if you want to call, and I'll go into it more. But does a school offer the program in a minimum degree for me to attain the employment in my chosen career field? I can't tell you how many students pick a school for all the wrong reasons and get there and a year later find out that what they wanted to be when they grew up was not going to be possible through the institution they were at. And you go, why did you pick that? Because my girlfriend went there. Or I call it the Pied Piper effect. The valedictorian from the high school class goes to Slippery Rock and eight other kids follow him. Honest to God, I've watched it in my four years. That's not how you pick them. What's the mean GPA of last year's entering class? That's really important. That's why freshmen, eighth graders, need to know what is my target. If the mean grade point average of the admitted freshman class at I won't say a Michigan school because I work for both of those that y'all don't like. So I'll just say Purdue. I <laughs> think go blue. Yeah, I told him this is an amazing, this is amazing blue tie. I almost got thrown out of the office. Anyhow, um, if you want to go to Purdue and the mean GPA of the admitted freshman is a 3.56, what should your kid be targeting? A 3.56. You know, even though the catalog might say you have to have at least a 2.7 or a 3.1, that is not the target. You don't want to target the minimum, you want to target the mean. That's your best chance. What's the mean ACT score required or SAT score? Or do they use those test scores? Or do they count two times? If I take the ACT twice, what are they going to do with that? Do they take the first or the second? Do they average them? Those are questions you want to know early because you need to be grooming your child to be able to be ready to make the decision on his or her own on which school admission letter they want to accept, not which school denial letter is going to make them cry. This is a big one. Is there an advantage to applying early? Many schools that I know of uh, have, they have tied the scholarship deadline to the application deadline. One of the schools I worked for had an, admission, had an application deadline of December 1, and that was for admission and full consideration of all scholarships. Those are questions you want to know. If your kid applies in February, did he or she just lose all of those options? You, again, you need, as parents, these are things that, again, I've had six kids, I love my children, but they couldn't remember what they were going to do tomorrow or what they ate for breakfast yesterday. They're not thinking about, I'm a freshman, what am I going to do in my senior year? You're going to have to take control of that and ask these questions. Is there a quota or limit to the number of students admitted into my chosen program? That's a real key. Are, and I think there's a later question. Uh, yeah, it's, it's another one. I'll maybe I'll just change the screen since I'm talking while we wait. This is a real key. Um, is there a limit? I was showing that when I worked at Michigan State University, and I, can, I can't relate to an Ohio school other than the kids, it's the only one I worked at, and just forget <coughs> it right up front. But there are two types of universities in my mind. There are those that admit students to their major, and those that, that, that you're either admitted to your major or you're admitted as a wannabe. Now, Michigan State University, along with a number of other institutions, especially in the Big Ten, you're admitted with a preference for a major, but you're not admitted to that major until your junior year. Got it? Over half of the students that came to Michigan State University saying they wanted to get into the College of Education did not make it. You know, I understand how angry you are that you just spent $45,000 for your kid to be in education when they weren't admitted to the College of Education. Is there a limit on the number of people they're going to take in and what is the mean GPA of the people who made it? Now, is it my major to earn or my major to lose? At the University of Michigan, you're admitted to your major, so it's your major to lose. If you're admitted to the University of Michigan College of Engineering, they, they think you got it together. But they know their records, their data shows that there's going to be a certain amount of attrition. So for maybe the first time in your student's life, they are competing with, it'd be like, this gentleman here is competing with every one of you for one of those seats at his junior level. It's his major, it's your major, it's your major, but it's your major to lose. If you don't perform at the right rate, you're out. We call it a, a can't, not permitted to continue in your major, in PC. You're not permitted to continue. There are people who are admitted to the College of Business who in a semester do bad and are 
they're not at Cal University, they just can't continue in their major. What does it take? If you don't know that going in, as a parent, you're going to be one of those people on the phone to me yelling at me. And I'm going to have to say, wait a minute, all this stuff is public knowledge. You should have asked me those questions back there. I'm sorry. Okay? So the school home, oh, it didn't switch. I'm sorry, I'm talking fast. You could jump in. Will I be an admin director in my field of study? That's, that's the question. Are there work or volunteer experiences I could have that would advance my admission into a program I wish to enter? You know, many institutions require, you know, this letter. I love that admission letter that the students write, where they have somebody else write it for them or whatever. I think it's the dumbest thing in the world. Uh, I've been in admissions for 41 years. I, I've never had to deal with it, you know, I want to come to that university because I'm awesome and you need me. No. Uh, but is there something? Do they need? Is it important? You know, I can tell you that admission at a major research institution is based on predicted grade point average based on what are called academic predictor courses. At both those big schools up in Michigan, we recalculated grade point averages. And we didn't believe that band and art and all that stuff wasn't important, but we knew that every program had an academic credential that required math, science, social science, foreign language, and English. And that was the, those were the only courses we used for admission. So make sure your child's curriculum is rigorous. Don't let your kids skip senior math. The number one barrier between a human being and their college degree in America today is the math required in their, gradu in their graduation degree program. Number one barrier. What other mandatory expenses might I incur? This is one of them that just freaks a lot of people out, and you're going to find universities that are really happy to say that our tuition is only. Tuition is only a part of the cost. You know, again, I've worked in institutions that have this wonderful thing they call a matriculation fee. Now, in the state of Ohio, the legislature mandates that we can't raise our tuition more than 3.5% in any given fiscal year. But you know what? College fees, matriculation fees, registration fees, parking fees, all those fees are not regulated by a legislator. So when they say, well, our tuition only went up 3.5% this year, that's because that's all the higher you could raise it. But what else? <laughs> I have fun with this because I watch too many people in my years. I asked my wife one day, I said, how many people have I spoken to in four years? I, didn't, I wouldn't even want to begin to count. But my goal is, please don't be blindsided by some of this. You know, it's like all of a sudden, oh, they have this fee. Oh, they got this fee. Oh, there's this other fee. I sent my kid to a private school, the Illinois school up in anybody's from there, this beautiful place. Yes. You know, I knew what it was going to cost until they had to go on this trip, and it was that trip, and all of a sudden, I'm like, holy, <laughs> you just added about $2,500 to the cost of sending my kid to the school that was already too expensive. Know what those fees are before you go in. And I know that there was a little scholarship or financial aid thing going on. I'd love to talk to you about student loans and how to manage them, but that's not why I'm here. But check out those expenses. And I'm hoping this is the last slide if it ever decides to come. There are, are additional financial aid opportunities available through my major department, how to qualify. <coughs> The, many of the big scholarship providers to universities provide awesome scholarships to juniors and seniors in major fields that they want to try and hire from. Got it? They don't offer it to freshmen and sophomores. You, know, you can go to some of these big universities and, and electrical engineering students are getting in, uh, scholarship opportunities from Chrysler, GM, Ford, any number of other organizations, but it's at their junior or senior year. Find out if those exist and how does my son or daughter possibly qualify for those down the road? Because they do exist. In my mind, I'm very colloquial, forgive me, but there are two, I said there are two kinds of universities. Is it you know, major to keep or major to earn? I think there's two kinds of uh, scholarships. There's a buy me scholarship and a keep me scholarship. There are certain institutions that are going to want to buy your student because the GPA or the test scores are really good and they're going to make you offers. Because a private university, they automatically have a discount rate that they're going to offer anybody. The last one I worked at, we started at 17%. So there was the sticker price. I knew that as the director of admissions, I could offer any one of you that opportunity at 17% less than the sticker price. But at a private university, I can manipulate the tuition and fees. So be aware of some of those things. Sticker price. You buy a car because it said $35,000, or you just say, I'll give you $31,000. You can't do that with public 
Anyhow, what is the job placement? And this is an important one, graduate professional admissions record. If, if you were to uh, and I'm gonna go back through an experience, and my staff hates me saying this word all the time, but if you were to ask Michigan State University, what's the placement rate of your computer science graduates? They would say it's 100%. But only 60% are going to industry. The other 40% are going on to graduate work. 100% of the 60% get work, and 100% of the 40% get admitted to a graduate program. That's an important piece, because in today's world, you don't work for me without a master's degree. Back when I started this business, you just had to have a bachelor's degree. But you can't be on my team without a master's degree now. So understand, what, what is the placement rate or admission ratio for students out of your program if they wish to go on. You know, I got my bachelor's in business management from your university, I want to go on to an MBA. What's the placement rate? Well, we admit about 47%. Find another school. That's a pretty low rate. And this one uh, uh, is my last one. If you plan to attend a university regional campus like I represent or a community college, then, then transfer to a senior institution Ask which program of study or specific curriculum you should complete at the community college prior to you transferring. And I'm not talking about to me and my staff, I'm talking about the other institution. Go talk to them. What if I want to transfer, let's say, for fun, try C to the University of Miami, what do I have to do? What's that look like? You've got to go to Miami and work backwards. Go to the, degree, the, the ultimate or terminal institution and come back through the system and do that. Let the advisors at that community college help you select the courses or which ones are going to transfer. And I shared with somebody in here, uh, I can't remember who exactly, but in the state of Ohio, it's a really neat kind of thing. It's called the transfer module. And in the state of Ohio, the state uh, board of uh, those guys, <laughs> anyhow, there's a state board, that, uh, board of regents that says that every public university must have a set of courses that fit into this transfer module, and any student who completes that transfer module can take that pile of courses to any other public university in the state of Ohio, and they transfer and they count. Now that's a really that's a real big plus because it's about 30 semester hours of coursework. Okay, so you know it's like the entire first year of general education coursework is guaranteed if you follow that module, and it doesn't matter whether you come to the Geauga Regional Campus or you go to try C or you go to Ohio, it's going to go to any public college or university as a transfer. So for those who aren't sure what they want to be in their grow up, stay in that general education thing, work with your career counselor, and all of a sudden you find out that the college you're in, and to do that doesn't have the major you want, it'll get you where you want to go. If you stay in that transfer module, you can pick it up and take it with you anywhere. So my, and the last slide is really not that impressive, but I'll go there. Uh, <laughs> You'll see on the blue sheet that I, I uh, on the, uh, the third paragraph, last sentence, please be sure to visit each institution into which you may consider enrolling. Please visit. I can't tell you in my history of working at the number of institutions and with the number of institutions I've worked with over the years, how many students show up and at orientation, they've applied, paid their fees, done everything, they're at orientation, you say, for how many of you is this the first time you set foot on our campus? At one university, I know it was 35% on average of the students who came to orientation, spent the money, never set foot on a campus before that point. That is a mistake. It's like going online and buying a pair of shoes and not worry about the color or the size, and you just buy them. I'm going to buy shoes. I'm going to go to college. And you get there, and it, and it stinks. And, and, and I'm going to say one other thing about business, and I'm going to shut up. Me. When you go to a college to visit, understand that there are a whole bunch of people that are professional recruiters, like me. I'm a very successful recruiter. I've met or exceeded the enrollment goals of every institution I've ever worked for. And I'm very proud of that. It took a lot of hard work. I don't lie. I was taught about ethics. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you the truth. But because I tell the truth, I get more people than if I lie to you. I found that out. But understand that's my job. So when you go to visit, go to the student union. Eavesdrop. Stop a student on the, on the sidewalk. Say, hi, I'm just visiting today. My son and I are here just checking out the school. If you had to come here again, would you do it? 
Tell me about the residence halls. What's your experience like in the residence halls? Oh, the food's horrible. Really? You know, or, you know, ask those questions. Because that's where you're going to send your kid. And if you're like me, I want to make sure that my, my child is someplace safe, comfortable, they're going to enjoy it, it's going to meet their needs and my needs, because that's coming out of my pocket. <laughs> the gentleman back here was talking about, you know, my daughter goes to Southern School and it's only $1,000 spread it out. You know, really? The work at the University of Charleston in West Virginia where I worked was $30,000. You know, we're starting at 30, we'll just start targeting with me. You know, still thirty thousand dollars for something that your kid has never visited before. Doesn't ask those questions. I don't know about you. So this is who I am. No, oh, that was on the first screen. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Question. Um, I just answer any questions you have. Anybody have any questions, comments, or criticisms?